We are the God Culture, a group of independent researchers with no affiliation to any denomination nor organization whatsoever. We read the word and we test it as 1 Thessalonians 5.21 tells us, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And man, is it good to be in his presence in all things. So far, we can see that the death and resurrection of Messiah lays out a timeline in which the day begins at sunrise and the Sabbath, Saturday, at sunrise. If you missed parts 6a, b, and c, you may want to go back because they are the foundation for this video and likely you will not understand it. And watch those first because this is a continuation. One thing before we start. Some come into comments saying to read the Genesis account. And some are genuine and some, of course, are just trolling. They claim it only identifies an evening and a morning. And that is somehow a day. And we will address this in a full video, as that's only a portion of the day last we checked, and the Hebrew word interpreted essentially as 24-hour day over 400 times in Scripture is right there, yom, in each day, yom, as well. Therefore, it's 24 hours. Yahuwah created in the daytime. Then it was evening. Then it was morning for a full day. There is no reading just evening and morning, and claiming somehow that is now a day when that is never the case in Scripture. It's not. I know Messiah did define 12 hours of daylight, but that's daylight. And last we checked, each yom, 24-hour day, has a night too. Or, as genuine Genesis uh, 1 puts it, evening and morning. This is the exact kind of reading that will change a passage completely, so be careful with the word. Yes, we know this comes from scholarship even, and it is wrong. Now, we go back into the Old Testament, and we will demonstrate Moses firmly identifies the start of the day as sunrise, not based on the lunar calendar at sunset, which is rebuked by the Book of Jubilees. Again, we covered the Book of Jubilees, which tells us the calendar of the Bible, since creation is one of 364 days. It's laid out as 12 months of 30 days each, with one day added at the end of each quarter. If we were to follow the moon, as the Babylonians do, yep, that's their calendar. And Judaism is a Babylonian creation indeed. This would disrupt Yah's calendar by coming in 10 days too soon, based on just calculating new moons, but even looking at the entire moon cycles. It's all over the place. Uh, many times we'll hear from someone who will say, oh, well, you know, it's inconsistent, 52-week cycles of seven days. No, it's not. Go look at the moon calendar. Go, go look at the moon cycle for this year, and you will find it disrupts 22 times. That's 22 of 52 weeks that are not accurate. So it cannot be used. It just can't. Now, yes, that's the year, but Jubilees says it also affects the days, the Sabbaths, weeks, months, years, and Jubilees, which is every 50 years. Now, let's go into the writings of Moses and see what we find. This video will begin with the Exodus especially, which demonstrates the timing of a day indisputably. We are not offering this up for debate, by the way, as by the end of parts six, all of them in this Sabbath series, we will settle this debate. Let's start with one of the plagues. Follow this timeline. When is today and when does tomorrow begin? It does tell us. Here we go. Exodus 10, Moses says to Pharaoh, Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring locusts into thy coasts. So locusts will come when? Tomorrow. Now Pharaoh, of course, refuses today to let the people go. So let's fast forward to verse 13, but we're still in 
today. Understand that. Read this in context for yourself, and you'll see that. Now, verse 13. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and Yahuwah brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. All day and all night when? Today. We are in today. This is the day that Moses said that to Pharaoh, the day Pharaoh refused, setting up for what Moses said would be the coming of the locusts. When? Tomorrow. This is pretty simple. And yes, we're breaking it down elementary on purpose because this needs to be clear. So let's see what it says. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. So the locusts came tomorrow, according to Moses, right? That's what he said. They'll come tomorrow. And he told Pharaoh, and Pharaoh refused. Yahuwah brought the east wind that day, yesterday, where we are now, or today as we were first reading it. So day and night. The night was part of yesterday. It is not tomorrow. Ooh, did that make sense? It was tomorrow as Moses promised in the morning. Tomorrow was not last night. Last night was yesterday. It is not tomorrow. It is not, it was today, yesterday. (laughs) I'm really trying to make this simple. That was part of the previous day. Tomorrow begins in this narrative in the morning. The locusts came tomorrow, which began in the morning. The Old Testament does not propagate a lunar calendar. That is fraud. Let's move forward to the last plague in Egypt, which also will affirm our last video as to the timing of Messiah's death and resurrection, as we will deal with the Passover event and how it went down. This is good and very hard to mistake, really. Although, honestly, we could end this video already. First, let's talk about the Passover sacrifice, Exodus 12. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Stop. This is the Passover. Notice you keep it up until the 14th day of the month. It ends at the end of the 14th day. It begins the 14th of Abib in the evening. So it just started in the evening and it ends on the 15th. So it's not a full day. Therefore, it ends the 14th day. But when does that end? When does the 14th end? When does it become the 15th? Well, it tells us. Let's see. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it, the Passover lamb, in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. So they kill, they roast, they spread the blood on the door posts for protection, and they were protected, of course, and they eat the Passover that same evening. It is an evening event. And you will see it has an end. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs they shall eat it. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, at sunrise. And that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. So we have a finality to the sacrifice. The morning, sunrise, it's all gone. Whatever's left, you burn it with fire. It's gone. Why? Well, you will see that starts the 15th, a new day, and Passover is only on the evening of the 14th and is over by sunrise on the 15th. Leviticus explains. Leviticus 7. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. Same as Exodus, it has to be eaten on the 14th, 
not the 15th. All of it's gone by then. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. Wait, so the 15th starts when? In the morning, at sunrise. Same as Exodus, but again, this gets more specific. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offereth his sacrifice. Okay, so it must be eaten by the morning, and that is the same day as the sacrifice. But sunrise is a new day here. And here we go. And on the morrow, tomorrow, also the remainder of it shall be eaten. Now, this is where many misread the Bible and attempt to say, see, the Bible contradicts itself. No, it doesn't. It can't. Jubilees 49, by the way, is worded very similarly. So if you read it, you'll see it says basically the same as you see here in the English. But here's the thing. The Passover sacrifice, now we already read, must be consumed and burned by fire, all that's left of it, before sunrise. Now, it's saying you eat the rest tomorrow. Uh, how can you eat it? It's gone. You just burn the remainder with fire. It's gone. It's not there to be eaten. That's not what this is saying. That's the challenge. And it usually is. It's usually our man's understanding that takes this and says, oh, well, see, there's a contradiction. No, no, your understanding is a contradiction. That's the problem, and that's usually our problem as men. Now, this is reiterating that by tomorrow, remember this is written in Hebrew, not in English, the remainder is already eaten, and none is left. There are no leftovers in the fridge. All of it is gone. Yes, remember the times, no fridges either. Therefore, this is telling us the same thing. Because you cannot eat what is gone. In other words, by tomorrow, the remainder should already have been eaten. If you really rendered this accurately to what it's saying. Otherwise, it's a contradiction. We don't believe there are any contradictions in the word. Leviticus 22 later says, On the same day it shall be eaten up. There you go again. And ye shall leave none of it until the morrow. I am Yahuwah. So you are to eat it the same day, which has already been defined as that night, as far as the Passover sacrifice. So, and before sunrise, you leave none for tomorrow, none for the morning. You consume it and burn the rest by fire before sunrise. No, in other words, morning begins tomorrow, period. In Leviticus 7, it says morning, and here it says in Leviticus 22, tomorrow, because morning is tomorrow. Because sunrise begins a new day. The Passover story really nails this down further. Let's take a look. Here's the Passover story. We're going to pull out uh, just sections that have time markers, basically. But read the whole thing in context. We're just not going to take this whole video and do that. Follow the progression, and it is obvious when the new day begins. Verse 11. For I, Yahuwah, will pass through the land of Egypt, when? This night. Okay, 12. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. That's the 14th. It's Passover is what they're talking about. Yahuwah is. But keep going and you will find the morning begins the 15th and no longer the 14th. Because sunrise is a new day. 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord Yahuwah smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Now we're still on the 14th at midnight. 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night. So obviously after midnight, still on the 14th. 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night. After midnight, obviously again. Still on the 14th. 
Exodus tells us the Israelites are then freed, but it doesn't give the time of day, even though it is obvious. But that's okay because Numbers firms this up better. You will notice how this affirms the previous two videos as far as the death and resurrection of Messiah and the whole Passover timing. It's right here as well. It has been all along. The Old Testament and the New Testament tie together. Because there's no such thing as an old and a new. There's the writings of the prophets and there's the writings of the apostles. Period. Numbers 33, 3. And they departed from Ramses, Goshen, in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month. Wait, it was just the 14th still, after midnight, when Moses was given the go-ahead, you leave. It's okay, take your people and go. Now, that's because the day begins when? At sunrise, the 15th began then. And here we go. On the morrow... After the Passover, see tomorrow after the Passover, the 15th in the morning at sunrise or after sunrise, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. Pharaoh let the people go just after midnight, and they prepared and left in the morning on the 15th. They did not wait until the evening the next day, supposed on the lunar calendar, to leave. Nonsense. They got their things together, asked Egyptians for help, which they gave, and got out of there. Remember, they were slaves, guys. They didn't have a lot of possessions. But what they did have, they could gather pretty quickly. And it didn't take long for them to go to the Egyptians. Yahuwah laid on the hearts of the Egyptians to give to them, it says in Jubilees. If you read this account, by the way, in Jubilees, it gives far more detail. It talks about how Prince Mastema, which is Satan, was actually bound during this time, so he could not lay it on their hearts not to give. He could not lay it on Pharaoh's heart not to let them go. And he was bound for, I believe it was three days, but I, I don't remember off the top of my head. And then he's loosed, and that's when Pharaoh changes his mind. Now it all makes sense. So when you read this full story in the book of Jubilees and Genesis para, or Exodus parallel, man, this really comes to life. So that's Passover. But then there's the golden calf incident at Sinai. Now there are markers all over, especially the whole Exodus account, uh, even for dates, and someday we'll get there too. But we are only dealing with the ones that help to determine the time of day here. Because that's what this video and this part of the series is about. When does a new day begin? At sunrise. Exodus 32. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Now we're talking about the golden calf. This is not a good story. All right. This is, and these people are killed, many of them as a result. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord, Yahuwah. Now, when is tomorrow? Hmm. He's going to tell us in a second. But before, I want to make this clear. Yes, Aaron said this was a feast to Yahuwah. It's not. This is before the golden calf. And Yahuwah always rejects such mixing, period. You cannot worship him before an idol and include that idol in worship ever exodus 20 is very clear and if you do there is a curse to the third and fourth generations three to four hundred years very serious the only commandment that comes with a curse in fact but the point is tomorrow is the feast so when do they feast oh look at this and they rose up early on the morrow tomorrow Wait, early morning is tomorrow, because sunrise is tomorrow, the next day. This is so clear. And offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play, all of which Yahuwah rejected. Of course, Moses comes down from Sinai, is angered, righteously. By the way, he's not rebuked by Yahuwah for breaking the tablets. Nope. Yahuwah goes and makes another set. So there was nothing wrong 
with being righteously angry. And we will show it on this channel. We know some don't like that. Get over it. Now, as a result, many are killed by Levite priests, the righteous priests were also righteous in killing. What? Yep, they were. Because this was justified. This was executing his judgment, his counsel. This happened, though, the same day. Now, this part of the passage is not as specific as the previous, but I'm continuing just because I want to be clear. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. Notice it wasn't all of them. Not everyone was worshiping the golden calf. There was a cult, a sect within that was doing so. And it came to pass on the morrow, tomorrow, still sunrise as set previously, that Moses said unto the people. See, we see this throughout in, throughout the Old Testament, throughout the Bible. Whenever you see a battle, for instance, we know that when they would war, they would typically attack during the day. They didn't typically attack at night. When they attacked at night, it, it does say that they do sometimes. It was a rarity. But typically when you see it say, and tomorrow they went to war, they went to battle, they battled, so-and-so did this, it's always the next morning right after sunrise, typically. I mean, that's just over and over and over again. We're not going to go through all of those because these are so clear and specific. We really prove the case. Now, this is just the Passover account, essentially, and Exodus time markers, and the Book of Jubilees affirms Exodus, by the way. Now, we will go to the story of the manna next, and this is really cool. So this is a good stopping point for this video. This affirms Messiah's death and resurrection timetable, just as we covered in the previous two videos, which shows Passover is an evening event. Again, Jubilees affirms this as an evening event, and at sunrise, a new day, the 15th, begins. A Sabbath, in fact, because it's a feast Sabbath, and Sabbath begins at sunrise. The weekly Sabbath begins Saturday at sunrise to Sunday just before sunrise when Messiah rose on Sabbath, on still Saturday in the hours of the dark, and not Sunday yet, not until sunrise. Now, you know, we have kept Sabbath on Friday evening at sundown for many years ourselves. I personally have, my wife and I. And this was not something that I just jumped right in on myself. We've been working on this for really years. Uh, discussions back and forth, disagreements among our group. Some were right about this all along. I'll just say it. And I wasn't necessarily. So there you go. Now, you know, we have kept Sabbath all these years on Friday evening at sundown. Frankly, anything that comes from the Pharisee camp, though, really modern Judaism, the Pharisee Catholic Church, yep, a Pharisee established that, and Pharisees, and it continues such doctrines, and even the Reformation of it, which is called Protestantism, must be tested with Scripture, because 2,000 years of leaven has confused so much. But we are in the days of increasing knowledge, my friends, not just us, but others as well, and even in our own, your own journeys. The Holy Spirit will speak to us and show us in these days what the Bible truly means that was concealed in the days of Daniel and even in the days of Enoch. They could not know those things, but they were sealed for our generation. Anyone standing still during this time, throwing spears at the spokes as a train leaves the station while it builds momentum, will find themselves ineffective and especially impertinent in the end. Because there is no stopping this train. It's not the God culture or any group. It's the Holy Spirit, and prophecy will be fulfilled. We will know these things in these days. It's not us. And we know that there is a group of communists out there 
who are trolling our channel like crazy. And every time we release a video, immediately they try to pick it apart, of course with complete utter ignorance in almost every comment. They take fragments out of context, they'll try to find this, that, anything. They'll come in under the name of this person or that person, but we know by their comments who they are, and we delete those. And we're going to continue to delete those because what they are doing is not even watching the videos a lot of times, or they'll just take screenshots and pull this or pull that, or they'll take the audio, just listen to the audio, try to break it down. All they're looking for, they're not actually listening. They're looking for something to pick apart. That's it. Even if it's just one piece of a comment, because that's what they do. We're in those days. Evil is painted as good. Good is painted as evil. And I'm going to be very clear. That channel and what they are doing is evil. Restore the Sabbath. Renew his ways in your life. It's not about legalism, but about relationship with him. May we all continue to grow daily in him. Thank you for watching our Sabbath series. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. Over 250 videos now for you to test. Links as the top pin in comments and in the description box. Many available in English and Tagalog now. Don't forget, like us on Facebook at The God Culture Space hyphen Space Original. Remember, we only have one YouTube channel and only one Facebook page right now. So any others are not ours. Share this video with others and check out our website at thegodculture.com. Always remember to prove all things for yourself. We love you all. Yahuwah bless and Shabbat Shalom or Sabbath peace if you are watching this on the Sabbath. Stay safe and Yah bless to all.